uh, 3.3 example one for math 30 one it just asks us to use the factor theorem which means we need to remember what the factor theorem is and what it tells us is that x minus a is a factor of p of x um, and there's a particular term in math it's if and only if um, and we typically write that as a, an if with two f's but don't worry too much about that for today i'm going to write if and only if p of a is equal to zero. Now, what that means is we have to, you know, roll back. We've been doing this a lot since chapter one, that if we're looking at x minus one, then that's as simple as checking the polynomial at one. Because x minus one and x minus a are in the same form, right? We can see that a is one very clearly. Checking the polynomial at one is as simple as substitution. So that's one cubed minus three times one squared minus one plus three. That works out to one minus three minus one plus three. So negative one, positive one cancels, negative three and positive three cancels, and we get that it's equal to zero. So yes, it is a factor. Now, remember that that really means that that polynomial, P of X then, I could write as X minus one times some quotient function that we don't know yet, right? Long division would allow us to do that, and we're gonna do that later in 3.3, but not for this example. All right, for part B, we're gonna check X plus one. And this is where it's very important to recognize that if we look at X plus one, and I want it in that X minus A form, then I can rewrite that as X minus negative one. So to check if X plus one is a factor of P of X, I'm going to evaluate P at negative one. And that's equal to negative one cubed minus three times negative one squared minus negative one plus three which is negative one minus three plus one plus three, and it is equal to zero as well. So yes, X plus one is a factor. Now the reality is that if we do this one more time and we get a third factor, we have actually managed to fully factor this polynomial using the factor theorem. And that doesn't always happen, um, but if you get that ability, you've kind of done a question that usually is much harder in a lot less space. I just rewrote these on the bottom so I wouldn't have to scroll up too much. Um, for C then, to check if X plus three is a factor, I'm gonna check the polynomial at negative three, and that's equal to negative three cubed minus three times negative three squared minus negative three plus three. Negative three cubed is negative 27. This is gonna be minus 27, then plus three, plus three. This ends up being negative 54 plus six, so that's negative 48. And I'm gonna say that because P of negative three does not equal zero, X plus three is not a factor. And you know, it is one of those things that this seems maybe, uh, I guess, deceivingly easy. And I, I think checking for factors is easy but it's important that this is really just gonna be the first step in factoring cubics and higher when it comes to you know, nice integral coefficients on the variables. All right, for D to check if X minus three is a factor, I would check the polynomial at three, and that's gonna be three cubed minus three times three squared. Let me put a bracket around there, that's weird without. Um, minus three plus three, right away we know these cancel. Three cubed is 27, but then I'm subtracting 27. Well, those cancel and I get zero, so X minus three is a factor. Now, I do want to do something with this just to make sure we see the point, because otherwise we can get lost in the math. We just found out that P of X has three factors, X minus one, X plus one, and X minus three. If we want to make sure that we've done this right later on, and when once we're you know, fully factoring, we could simply expand the right-hand side. Now, expanding the right-hand side, x minus 1 and x plus 1 is a difference of squares. So now I have x squared minus 1 times x minus 3. That's equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3. And if you look up, we get that polynomial. So the point of this factor theorem is just that, it's namesake, it's to factor these polynomials, which allow us to very quickly determine the x-intercepts in the factored form, right? We know that this goes through the x-intercept at positive one, because it makes that factor zero, negative one, because it makes that factor zero, and positive three for our third factor.